Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre, and once again, we're recording at Nutmeg with our engineer, Frank Verderosa. And our trusty researcher, Paul Rayburn. Now, Paul, I forget- Is that what he does? <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> yeah. He also likes to keep us company. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's a buffer between you and me. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> my uh, Michael Corleone had a lot of buffers. Had a lot of buffers, yeah. Senator. <laughs> so, Paul, at the end of every episode, I keep forgetting your plug. You've been here. You've, you're you're faithful. You're loyal, and you have a book. And this time, I'm going to open the episode with your plug. We've mentioned your book right before, but tell us again. So it's called the Game Theorist's Guide to Parenting. Yes, sir. And it's a way to do a better job of negotiating with your children so that they don't always win and you don't always lose. Right. And it's been tested in the home of a certain uh, Gilbert Gottfried. You don't say. I do say. And how does now, that work? Both of my kids are in prison. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's a testimonial. Wonders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was it test driven in the Gottfried home? Uh, well, I we talked about we talked about the book, and Gilbert said that uh, he had negotiated with his children over M and M's. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lily was playing him, and they ba- right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and where can people get this book, Paul? At bookstores everywhere, Amazon, Barnes what, & Noble. What's a bookstore? <clears throat> oh, See, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm so moved by this that I'm choking up. That's okay. This week. <laughs> we, I, I thought you were dying. I was getting really excited. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> the time is finally yeah. gone. Uh, so here is, uh, here is an interesting uh, theme. It's not really a theme. It's a, it's, a, it's a premise. If it was a theme, I'd sing it. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, your rendition of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, made us yes. all very, very happy. Yes. It, it's what Christmas is all about. I think so. <laughs> this is our last episode of 2016. Wow. And I don't know how we did it. And when we started this show, Gilbert thought we were going to do four of these and go to the movies and call it a day. Yeah, I remember uh, we did our first one. We did. I won't say with who. <laughs> People know now. Yeah. Know, you still don't have to say but, what it is. <laughs> but I remember sitting in a, we were all sitting in a pizzeria afterwards. Yeah. I won't say pizza store, which I always say. <laughs> And it was and, a pizza store. And I was basically saying, all right, well, you know, we tried that. Yeah. Darren, yeah. And, I were, Darren <laughs> and I were profoundly depressed. Yeah. But we tried a second one with Dick Cavett. The rest is history. And we have done, counting the mini episodes, the Whoopi Goldberg episode, which went up today, 132 of these puppies. Oh, yeah. How have we done it? Yeah. How have you maintained your energy? Oh, I don't know. And your breath. It's <laughs> and your 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 lung capacity. Well, I'm going to do 2016 uh, in review. We started our first episode of 2016 was uh, Bobby Slayton, the pit bull uh, of comedy. Ah, uh, who was sitting here telling us about his horror film collection. Uh, then we did, of course, a George Zucco Gene Hackman tribute because everybody has to have. Oh one yes, on their yes. Podcast. And then episode 85, which uh, we put up in January, was one of your favorites and mine. Uh, you managed to wrangle the legendary Bruce Dern. Yes, yes. I had met him, I think, on uh, the Opie show. On the Opie and Jim. And, and it turns out he was a fan of mine. Yeah. He said something like, you know, if you're describing one word, it's courage. Really? And yes, something like that. Interesting. Great. Great compliment from Bruce Dern. Yeah, it was one of those calls, Dara saying, I think we got Bruce Dern, and I couldn't believe that we got such a name. And Bruce Dern, he was talking about how uh, he's not a big druggy. Not at all. He was clean. Yeah. He's a runner. And, and Nicholson was trying to force a joint into Bruce Dern's mouth. Correct. And he goes, you know, come on, you'll feel better. Oh, he says, he goes, Take a puff, you'll feel good. And he goes, I do feel good. And he goes, feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned what a Dernsey was. A Dernsey, on yeah. That episode, and he was a he was a champ. Was- and his memory is better than any computer. Yeah, he 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 could tell you what the key grip. On a movie, his name and address. You bet. And what he ate for lunch. You he, were present for that one, Paul. I, I, I was you in know, Gil's what was fu- funny about that? That's that's just what I was going to say. You know, not only do we have a guy of his stature 
but we're doing it uh, on the Gottfried dinner table. Correct. Dara Gottfried as the yes, engineer that's before, right. we, before we hooked up with Frank. Right. That's why we still have that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why, why, that's why, we, why that's why we're not going around saying, hey, we interviewed Bruce Stern. They go, no, you, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to reiterate that Frank Verderosa was not the man responsible for the lost audio in the lost episodes. That's what you say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we did episode 86, uh, which we put up in January of tw- uh, January 21st was, and he was right here in this room, the great Dominic Chianese. Oh, my God. And he serenaded God. us from the chair Paul was sitting uh, that, in right that, now. That was one of the great, believe it or not, there were actually some tender moments in this there show. There were. Yeah, that, that was the tenderest right there. That I brought think. a tear to yeah, my eye, that incredible. episode. Uh, but yeah. brother, can you spare a dime, no, he saying? Oh, man. Once I built a railroad, I made it run, I made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower to the sun. Brick and rivet and lime Once I built a tower Now it's done Brother, can you spare a dime? With the Italian song, what you know how like some of these great moments get lost after the show is stopped recording. We were out in just like the regular sitting area and that's playing... Uh, him singing the Italian song, and he's going, he's narrating it in English, and that was amazing. It was wonderful. That was that. That may have been one of my favorite episodes because it, it had everything in it. I mean, he got he got poignant when he was talking about Gandolfini and and the two songs, the Yip Harburg song, "The Brother Can You Spare a Dime," was a, a highlight in the history of this show. Yeah, it was a great moment. That was followed by uh, what may be my favorite mini episode. Where I hey, was that was my idea for him to sing Brother Can yes, You Spare a Dime? Because I knew, I knew this guy could could really do it. It's like he, he lived he lived that thing. Yeah. Uh, that was just a special episode. Oh, he was great. Special great. episode. The, the mini episode that we broke out after that one, episode, uh, mini episode 43, I was talking about Richard Lester I didn't know where you were going to go, and you started just off the, out of the blue talking about Bob Hope specials, and that was the episode yes. where we, we introduced Jack Frost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which became a runner. Yes. Uh, that, that is that the- Jack Frost is one of the most unintentionally frightening yes. TV shows <laughs> you'll ever it's see. It's become a staple of the yeah. show. Yeah. In fact, if you go to YouTube and you look it up, people, there's the, the, under the comments it says, Gilbert sent me here. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> Way up north by the polar sea where it's just as cold as cold can be. Old Jack Frost awoke one morning from a long, long sleep, and he said with a yawn, Ho hum, the time has come to freeze the trees and roses. And when that's done, I'll have some fun, nipping little toes and noses. Uh, after that, we had our pal George Takei at the Friars Club. Oh, my God, yes. Episode 87. Yeah. That was a great one. And he had just come from from a visit to the throat doctor. To the He was on stage, and he was in a, doing his Broadway oh, show yes. about internment camps. And you made him do... You made him do uh, uh, something from. Oh, uh, I had him do. Uh, from I, yeah, Adventist. I had him do yeah. Shylock doing Hath Not a Jew Hides. The poor man could barely speak. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he spoke warmly about his deep friendship with William Shatner. That was fun. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> we love George to death. The following mini episode, you introduced the world to your love of skeleton nags. <laughs> <laughs> You like to call him Skelton Canags. Yeah, I still call him Skelton Can. He looks like a, a Canags. Right. We had Joe Dante after that, who was terrific. And we had that, that whole discussion about whether or not you could order monkeys in the mail. 
Oh were, yes, you were a kid, yes. And he disputed that that was yeah, that and that it's was a thing. true. But yep. we found we found it. That's and right. and they would send you either diseased or dead monkeys. Oh my god, they were just <laughs> it it traumatized children. This show is nothing but educational. <laughs> uh, the following mini ep was once again Bob Hope's joys. Oh <laughs> you, god, you pulled that out of mothballs, and that became an obsession for a while. And people found it. People sent it to me. Everybody was in that. Wait, a couple oh, of yes. a couple of podcast guests turned up in that one. Oh like, yeah, like Storch and Marty Allen. Uh, look for that episode. Uh, episode number ninety, uh, which we put up uh, on uh, February fifteenth, uh, maybe Gilbert's favorite episode. <laughs> you were certainly the most touched or the most uh, excited to do this yes. episode, and that was that was you paying a visit to the legendary Dick Van Dyke. Oh my at God! His house yeah, in Malibu. Yeah, yeah. And and at first they uh, weren't answering us. It seemed like they uh, yeah, it wasn't looking good for a while. No, well, and, Dick was in New York and we missed him, and then you were you were crushed. And yeah, and then they they, and I was doing jokes about it. You know, his wife being a quarter of his age and all that. <laughs> and and then they in, not only invited us but invited us to come into his house. Yeah, he was a sport. And and we sang two duets together. Yep. It's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you always sound precocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Then you gotta go. Um, did a little, 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 you know, on the on the TV show, uh, Maury Amsterdam was Buddy Sorrell. Sure. And he said to me, he goes, you know, you would have made a good buddy on That's this nice. show. That's nice. So you were told by Dick Van Dyke that you would make a good buddy Sorrell. You were told by Adam West that you would have made a good penguin. Yes. See, aren't you glad you started this show? Yeah, yes. Aren't you glad we made it out of the pizza store? If only producers thought the same thing. <laughs> if only our audio was, yes. was preserved. Um, episode 94 was our pal Belzer. Uh, oh Richard, yes, Richard yes, a and lot of fun. He told that great story. Any Jews in there? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Liza Minnelli wants some juice, some orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Episode yes, 94. Check that was a very funny episode. Uh, Cliff Nesterman made his first visit on the uh, Cliff Navel Fourth. <laughs> Uh, episode 96, which we put up in March, um, the legendary Pat Cooper was here. Pat Cooper, uh, out of his mind, <laughs> and and is the best kind of guest to have. Yeah, he was right here in this room. I mean, there was nothing... It took no work. Did that we say one. anything? We didn't say a <laughs> fucking word. We just kind of sat there and let him scream. Oh, were you here hour. for that one? I I was not here for yeah. no. I was not here. Yeah, I, that was I legendary. To it, but yeah. Well, after we lost Jack Carter and we realized we didn't have a venomous, we didn't have an episode. <laughs> I turned to Gil and I said, "What about Pat Cooper?" And we called Pat. He had just come out of the. Uh, from a doctor's office. Yeah. And sure. And he showed up and he sat down. He's pushing. He's got to be 90. Oh, my God. Close and to it. He's just filled with anger and everything. <laughs> yeah, but, but also the man brought it. Oh, it he an did. Interview. He absolutely did. Um, my, and and I mean, we didn't have a chance to say <laughs> hello on that one. <laughs> I was afraid of him. Yeah. Even at his age. <laughs> The amazing thing is, you know, as dumb as I'm supposed to be growing, because we had no show business people in my house, and I spotted something. I said, why are the Jewish men funny? And I said, and because there was nobody else but the great ones, all Jewish comics. I fucking loved them. I said, and then I found out, simple, it's in the genes, and they have an automatic rhythm. And when you learn from that, rhythm is so important as a comic to get that way in that groove and that groove. It's like I, it's like going to a seeing, hearing a jazz artist, and you know, and I, I adored all of them, all of them. And I would go home and get my my mother and father beat the shit out of me. I would sit through you know six seven shows of of, uh, of Red Buttons or, or Jan Murray's, you know. And then they came to my house when I worked Vegas, and I'm going, I fucking couldn't believe it. And they're looking up to me like you know I'm the new guy. I'm going, they, you know, when Berlin these kind of guys that said Pat. You know, you, you did something nobody did. I says, "What? Well, I didn't know what the fuck I did. Uh, Michael McKean did episode 97. 
Uh, that was wonderful. He refused to sing with you. That oh, yes. Yes. Because <laughs> he knew I sang better than yeah, him. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Uh, we love Michael to death, and you also reminded him on numerous occasions that you had never seen this mm-hmm. a spinal tap. Never saw it. That endeared him to you. Yes. <laughs> uh, you to him, I mean. Uh, number Episode 98, we had the great Ileana Douglas. Yes, who was- said that she wanted to fuck Marlon Brando <laughs> even when he was 500 pounds. She did. Yeah, <laughs> which you repeated to the audience at the film forum. Uh, we yes, introducing the game yes. Of comedy. So you're saying I have a chance? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Frankie. Uh, we love Ileana. We got to get her back. Um, and I told Ileana when I was at a screening of Goodfellas. Oh yes, and they were trying to kick me out of the Museum of Modern Art. Yeah, that's like I don't know. For some reason, they didn't know who I was, or maybe they did. Well, she said <laughs> she said did. Scorsese was a fan of yours. Oh, he yeah, yeah. he is, and, and you could tell by all the Scorsese films. I mean. <laughs> yeah, you, you were great as Maury. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the one Jew character in a Scorsese film. <laughs> we, well, we should ask Marty to come and Marty, like I know the man. Yeah. we should ask Martin Scorsese to come and do the show. Well, if he's well. A fan of yours. Next time I talk to Bobby De Niro. <laughs> okay. We'll see what we can do. Maybe Dusty Hoffman can. <laughs> Dusty. <laughs> like he just I came off it. the trail. And R.J. Wagner. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, episode, the episode after that, one of my favorites, uh, Mark Hudson. Uh, I, I that The Mark Hudson one. Yeah. yeah. We were like in the kitchen area. Here at, at <laughs> Nutmeg. We didn't know and, what we were going to get out of Mark. And he walked in. And before we were anywhere near a mic, yeah. he told us about 10 of the most insane, yeah. dirty stories. Unrepeatable stories. Yeah. yeah. Oh, completely. Unfortunately. And and we can't repeat the names of the people he was mentioning. <laughs> because we would spend a lot of time in court. Like yes. A, another lost segment there. <laughs> I'll tell you. Get, take Gilbert and I out and get us drunk. Mark walked in. Jackie Martling had recommended Mark Hudson. Yes. I was a big Hudson Brothers fan, and I knew he'd work with Ringo and all these people. I said, oh, there's... That guy's got to be a storyteller, but we didn't know. He was an automatic. He was like the the, the guest you would make in a lab. Uh, episode 102, another favorite of ours, and this was just a wonderful surprise, the great Peter Marshall. Peter Marsh, terrific. Also great memory. Yeah. 90, another 90-year-old, and sharp as hell. Yes. And had stories at the ready and, and also settled the, uh, got the Paul Lynn story. About I, the gold diggers dressing room. I still say cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you still like your version? Yes. Uh, episode 103, Orson Bean came and abused us. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, b- 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 episode 105, and uh, this was a great one. Uh, this this had our, our favorite sing-along, Tony Orlando. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God. Tony Orlando <laughs> was great. What a treat. second now go for it gilbert i'm coming home i've done my time <laughs> now i've got to know what is and isn't mine if you receive my letter telling you i should be free then you'll know just what to do hurry if you still want me get to it if you still want oh, me mean, i'm so impressed Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been, it's been three long years. Do, do you still you let me sing for a minute? <laughs> if I don't see a ribbon round the old oak tree, I'll stay on the bus. Forget about us. Put the blame on me. Go ahead. If I don't, I don't see, see a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. Why am I sounding like you? Yeah, he's everything you want Tony Orlando to be. He is, again, like Mark Hudson. Every, and what's why we have to get more musicians on the show. Everything you want in a podcast guest. Oh, like, he walk was. Walk him in, sit him down, bang. The stories, the songs. And although 
Tony Orlando is not, in fact, a Jew. He's kind of an honorary Jew because his father <laughs> worked in the garment center. And I think they used to call either him or his father Ladle. Something. Yeah, Ladle. Yeah, yeah. or Ladle. Label. Label. It was Label because he was in the garment district. And <laughs> uh, Yeah, and he's buried. His father is buried in a Jewish cemetery. Yep. Wow. Tony is a treat and he a was sweet great. guy. Yeah. And uh, check out episode 105 with Tony Orlando. Uh, you won't be sorry. 106, we brought back our pal Dick Cavett for a live show yeah, Dick, at the New York Podfest. Dick's another one that you could leave and go to the movies and he'll just have stories to fill a up. A sweet guy who paid me a great compliment uh, that night that I will never forget, uh, 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 which was uh, lovely of him. And he patiently waited in sweltering heat uh, in, in the back room that we were in, in the green room, uh, for, for two hours. You were there yeah. that night, Paul. Yeah, I was there. And he was a champ, and he got, he got so warm at one point, he took his shirt off. And he did the podcast in his T-shirt. Yes, and yes. On Facebook said, "Why is Dick Cavett in his undershirt?" <laughs> <laughs> he just he just auditioned for Streetcar. He, he felt right at home. Apparently. What a lovely <laughs> man! Two episodes he's done this show. We just call him. He's an automatic. I love that guy to death. Episode one hundred and seven. Gilbert and I were treated to uh, the great Peter Bogdanovich. Oh yes, who had stories and stories about Hitchcock, about Ford. That was great. Oh, yeah. That's that's when I realized we had a guest who was actually too classy for the show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and one who I I was in a movie that he directed, and I never made it to the final cut, but it was the terrible uh, yes. last of the Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor film. That's it. Well, we were thrilled that Peter but, oh, he was terrific. agreed to do this. And a great storyteller. Episode 109, the late, great Marvin Kaplan. Oh, terrific. Yeah, we lost Marvin. He was wonderful. We called him up. He was an automatic. You had talked to him beforehand. Yes, and what what got me, that was so great. I wish I had recorded my off-mic off uh, phone calls with him because he was that who he was. He was that kind of character. Yeah. And um, Remember we called him? We had everything set up. We were here at Nutmeg, and Frankie got everything set up, and we called, and we got his answering machine. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was terrific. It was fantastic. I still, have, I still have that recording. It didn't. We didn't throw it out. Oh, yeah. we'll have to throw that in. We'll have to add yeah. that in post. That's and, a wonderful thing to and have. And he, he was asking us stuff like, well, do I have to dress up for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was terrific. Frisbee from the Great Race. Oh, yes. And the, and the gas station attendant whose name escapes me, Arnold Stang's uh, a yes. colleague. And, from and they Admin. get chased, terrorized by Jonathan Winters. What a wonderful guy. He was terrific. Just lovable guy. Yeah. And he, he was discovered by Catherine Hepburn. He was. And, yeah. He was. He was not a household name, Marvin, but he did so much work in Top Cat, of course, and he was in the Chicago Teddy Bears. Oh, yeah. With Art Matrano and <laughs> just just a wonderful career. And I heard from, I have some friends at Brillstein Gray that just called me up and said, uh, we just love the Marvin Kaplan episode. Yeah. He, they fell madly in love with it. Oh, yeah. Because he kept re- reminiscing about people and then he would say, I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I loved him. We loved Marvin and we miss him. Uh, Amy Heckerling, episode oh, one. Oh, yes. And the, baby, and the return of Amy Heckerling's babysitter. Oh, uh, yes. That's the <laughs> one I abused to no end. I would make, uh, I, w- I would tell her how much I wanted to have sex with Amy Heckling's daughter, who at the time I think was three. You sick, sick yeah. individual. <laughs> and, and I started doing Nazi jokes to her, you know. <laughs> it was, yeah. That was a Howard Stern staple. Yeah, they yeah. always played that. Yeah. Uh, me abusing uh, uh, Amy Heckling's daughter. German Jewish uh, babysitter. <laughs> she was a good sport. She came yeah. here anyway. Uh, we're fans of Amy. Um, John Biner, episode 111. Terrific. Uh, maybe in the running for my top three episodes. That yeah. was a flawless episode. That was We did that here, and John was on was on Skype. And red, he just came on ready to perform. Just just brought it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that the highlight of that episode for me was dueling Paul Williams. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Rainy days and Mondays always oh, get, get me, me done. done. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to myself and feeling old. 
I'm feeling old. Sometimes I'd like to quit. I'd like to quit. <laughs> Nothing ever seems to fit. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Walking around, nothing to do, do but frown. frown. When it is, is Monday, always get, get me, me down. down. <laughs> we did dueling Paul Williams, me and uh, John Biner, and we we sent it, or I called Paul Williams, and he left a message on my machine. Oh, he you was, didn't tell me this? Yeah. Paul Williams then called me back and I got a message, you know, like, and he, he loved it. He was crack. He couldn't even speak. He was laughing. Wow. Remembering it. Wow. That's nice. Uh, we love Paul. We got to get Paul back at some point. Oh, he's terrific guest. The Biner episode 111 is just perfect. And, oh, his, and he hasn't and, lost a step. And with Paul Williams uh, on that episode, I sang both uh, Rainbow Connection you in did. a duet with him and uh, uh, Nice to Be Around. You did. That was a great one. But that was just, uh, you love this guy as a kid. You haven't heard from him in a while. You wonder if it's all still there. And just, hey, come on, a little of the ant in the aardvark, and he's doing it. Oh, <laughs> yes. And he yes. told that great Cagney story, visiting Jimmy with Cagney. With a great Cagney The best invitation. Cagney. John Biner, for, for me, is just uh, flawless, uh, uh, just peerless. Um, episode 112, and this was a fun one. Dick DiBartolo and Al Jaffe. Oh, yes. And we got to hear about Dick's game show experiences and his his experiences at MAD, but also Al's fascinating life and sad life. Yeah. And where, that's, a, that's, a, that's a poignant one. They he, they were escaping from, was it Lithuania? Yeah, I think so. I think, well, his mother his mother didn't make it to the train in time, and the, and the, the train pulled away, and he went. He was going back to America to live with his father, and as it turns out, he never saw his mother again. And and I brother. think yeah. he said out of out of the window, he saw yes. his mother show but up. This is the here, train. a man who's 90 plus. He's 95, right? I believe. And he's remember, so he's remembering something that was 90 years ago. I have to say for this show, you know, we've been fortunate. You know, the 90-year-olds and the 80, 80-somethings. Amazing and they all come memories. In here and just Peter Marshall and, and, and Dick Van Dyke and, and Roger Corman. Oh, yes. And, and, uh, and Al and just automatics and boom, there it is. You know, it's uh, really, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. It might sound like it, but I, some of these things should be like in the Smithsonian. I mean, these people are talk about things that's a huge part of our cultural history that they haven't said anywhere else. Yes, Yes. And when he was talking about like escaping from Lithuania and his mother's not making it to the train. And I thought, and this is a guy famous for making people laugh. Yeah. Yeah. That was the parallel that you drew. Yeah. He's a wonderful guy, Al. I'm so, oh, yeah. I'm so blessed. I've been writing for Mad uh, on and off for about 20 years and, and to meet those guys, to meet Drucker and oh, Aragonis yeah. and, uh, I never, I never met Jack Davis, but uh, Paul Coker, the great Paul Coker, illustrated a piece I did. And to know Al, to get to know him, has been a, a thrill. Yeah. Really, really an honor. And speaking of poignant episodes, episode 114, and this one blew Gilbert away, Sonny Fox. Unbelievable. Yeah. I When he was coming on, I, you know, I remember one drama, and I thought he was going to have some fun stories about kids saying the darndest things or or maybe a kid wetting their pants during the show. And he he was a prisoner of war. Yes, indeed. Held by, like, the Nazis, and they were held in a train car. That's right. Like, shoved in together, I think. For weeks. Thir- a 30-something. can't remember them. if you would go back. And, and it, was, it was a car made for, like, 10 people. Yeah. And he survived a lot of hardships. Yeah. And and uh, and he and those stories were riveting. We could, oh we just my couldn't. God! And he's the only guest I think that does, that has teared up on yeah. the show. Unless you want to count Steve Buscemi's tears of regret. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember he told he told a story about how the the German officer said they they have to come out of the train and the Jews have to fall out. Yeah. And and the the uh, their sergeant who was not a Jew said to them, "We we all fall out." Yeah. And he said, and the sergeant stood up to the German officer and said, 
all of us are Jews. It was a Spartacus moment. Yes. Yeah. And so there were chilling and tearful moments in that. He was great. A terrific guest. Um, that was followed by uh, legendary character actor Dick Miller. Oh, was, yes. Who was colorful and fun and yes. had his wife, his wife Elaine at his side. And we love Dick, and he told a great monkey story. We like monkey stories. Oh, this yes. Show. <laughs> and, and he was like one of those. He was in a documentary called That, that Guy. That Guy, Dick Miller. And, and he's one of those That Guy actors. Yep. Uh, episode 116, uh, Matthew Broderick was kind enough to come over here. <laughs> and bless his heart, he came across town. He had a show that he night. Was he was doing a play. A show that afternoon that and afternoon. at night. Yeah. yeah. He, and, and with that brief space, he, he sped up in a cab yep. over here. And the first thing I said to him is how much I hated Ferris Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> because you really know how to warm up yeah. a guest and welcome a but guest. But he was a terrific guest. A wonderful guest. And I kept trying to mitigate it. This fast. <laughs> yeah. We love election. We loved it. Yes, but it it did show. I did say what uh, what a good actor he really is. Yeah. In that every time Ferris Bueller's on, I hate him because I believe that's him. Yep. But then I hear him in these other movies where he's playing like this nebbish. Yeah. And he both are convincing. He's good in a lot of films in, in films that have flown under the radar too. A movie called The Night, the Night We Never Met. Um. Uh, uh, you can count on me. Uh, a handful of films. He's really. He really does. Well, you some, can count on me. He was the banker. Love that film. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Made by his buddy Kenneth right. Lonergan. But uh, even in pictures that don't work very well, like The Road to Wellville, he's always solid. Yeah. You know. Um. Anyway, we we, we were thrilled that we got Matthew Project to come over <laughs> here between gigs. So thank you, Matthew. You're a sport. Uh, episode one seventeen. Maybe our most bizarro episode, yeah. and that's our friend Jonathan Katz. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Katz, Frankie V's favorite. <laughs> what can you say? Yeah, I love he, that man. He was <laughs> like with with Jonathan Katz. He'll tell these stories that are just totally mixed up and dragged <laughs> out, and they end yeah. completely flat. Yep. That's and part of his appeal. Yeah, yeah. and and after a while, I of hearing these stories, <laughs> I just totally lost it and could not stop laughing. I know. He was trying to tell stories, <laughs> and I was just screaming. Yeah. What's great is he called me like 12 times during the week before that episode <laughs> to run those stories by me. <laughs> he kept saying, John, anything you want. I assume they had endings. And I'm not, I'm not the only fan. I was listening to another podcast recently, and they had Michael Shannon. You know the, the actor. Oh, Michael sure, Shannon? sure. From uh, Zod, he was on yeah. it, and he starts the episode by talking about he doesn't watch a lot of TV, but the only thing he really likes is Doctor Katz. Yeah, and, and he, particularly Doctor Katz and John Benjamin. Just <laughs> and they're, they're great. With Doctor Katz, it's it's at the end where I completely lose it, and he continues trying to tell the story. <laughs> Tell the Conan O'Brien yeah, story. Yeah, this quick. sounds good. Okay, so you know, I'm, I'm, I go, I show up early. I go in to be made up, and I see this. There's a woman. There's a woman. There's a. There's a woman sitting there. There's a woman sitting there, and I say. I, I say to her. <laughs> I said <laughs> to her anytime. <laughs> I said to her anytime. I said to her anytime. And there's a woman sitting there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I go way back with John, and he is the sweetest man. He is uh, the, the the nicest person I've ever met in show business. <laughs> he's very funny in such an offbeat way. I, I, I mean, he's, I, and, and I tell you, it was almost like he was prunking us. It was so <laughs> oh like, yes, I, I, that, but that's his. You know, that's part of his mystique <laughs> and part of his act. He's a comic genius, and the work that he and um, uh, John Benjamin did on Dr. Katz is, is wonderful. 
Truly wonderful. Uh, this episode surprised and delighted Gilbert. One eighteen, and this was uh, we ran this on uh, September first. Uh, Hank Garrett. Yes, Hank Garrett. I mean, we both remember from Car Fifty Four. Yep. And I had forgotten all the character work he did in movies. A lot of character work. Yeah, and he had Sophia Loren stories, and he had Robert Redford stories. O.J. Simpson. Uh, right, he did a movie, that movie with O.J. Simpson that Dominic Chianese is also in. Oh yes. Uh, and also uh, the Three Days of the Condor. And a great storyteller. And who knew he was a professional wrestler? Oh, yeah. He was, <laughs> was, he so was terrific. Yeah. He had all of his stories. They were like, would talk about old movies he did, and they were so funny. Yeah. And he was a story, though. The witch was this. Oh, with Al Lewis. The sandwich story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should play that. We walk into an Italian deli. We're on break. Got two hours before our next shot. We walk in, and a little Italian gentleman sees us, and he's, uh, can I help you, officer? <laughs> said, uh, yeah, we, we want to get a couple of sandwiches. And he said, and he's, <laughs> he said, my father, I can say, two silver, I got you down, my father, you know, go for it. He says, anything else uh, you like to have with this sandwich? <laughs> So Al says, yeah, I'll have a soda. And I, I, I said, no. And I, I, I look at the, this poor guy. And Al says, well, what do we owe you? Oh, nothing. I like to give him my food away. <laughs> and he gives us the sandwiches. And as, it's Ju- June or July. As we hit the door, he says, officer, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <You're so funny. laughs> I come back and I put a couple of bucks on the counter and we ran. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. Hank, that he, Hank Garrett. He episode. told a story about how O.J. Simpson smashed his head into yeah. a car. Yep, yep, yep. And he was unconscious. And Sophia Loren was cradling him yeah, in his arms. His wife showed up in hysterics, worried about her beloved husband. And there he is lying on the ground with his head cradled in Sophia Loren's lap. And her stroking his head. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> she stormed off the set. Yeah. I don't think a guest was ever so happy, too, with the result of the show and the and the social media feedback. I sent a Hank. I sent his, his manager. He was so gracious. He was so oh, grateful yeah. for having oh, done and, the show. And, uh, it was a great experience Orson for all of us. Bean got yes. in touch with us and yes. said, this is the most fan uh, messages he's gotten in the longest time that was uh, that was flattering it's rewarding when that happens i try to share the uh, the social media responses our fans are so generous and write so many great things that i feel it's a shame that we're not actually sharing them in fact bob einstein called me and 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 just was so grateful oh. that we'd been bringing up all this stuff and fans were posting clips of officer judy and clips that he hadn't seen in and, years and he was another one just shot out of a cannon shot out of a cannon Please welcome a man responsible for some of the best comedy of the last 50 years and one of the funniest human beings on the planet, Officer Judy himself, Bob Einstein. What an introduction. (laughs) I know, that was phenomenal. (laughs) I mean that. That was just the guy that gave me shit chills. And you know, I know you're, is that your sidekick or your producer? <laughs> I'm like, who is that sitting next to you? I'm both, Bob. I'm both of those things. Because you had nothing to do with that. Because <laughs> when I first it's all, met It all him, comes out of Gilbert. Yeah, he said, when I first met him, he said, oh, yes, I remember you did uh, the Honeymooners. And you did the, didn't you do wrestling? And, and, and I... And some other show, the bisexuals meet the transgenders. He didn't know shit. He didn't know shit. And he was reading off a piece of paper. It's all Gilbert, Bob. He does no, but Gilbert was brilliant. But you do no work. You do no work at all. And you come in, you took your coat off and read some fucking thing that you, I guess you had a year ago. <laughs> 
Episode 119 was the Impractical Jokers, our friends Q and Sam. Oh, yes. And I'll tell you what stays with me from that one was, can I possibly do less time? Yes, I said that to them. <laughs> they invited me to do their cruise. And and I went there, and I and I and he was imitating me, and it was true. He was, I said... Can I do less time? You asked his mother. Yeah, if yes. Can do less time, yeah. Can I? No is sense. there any way I could do? <laughs> They're great guys. Uh, episode one twenty one. Uh, one of my top five episodes, I think. Ron Liebman and Jessica Walter were here. They, I, I they, never had a better time in my life. Loads of fun. Yep. Uh, they they were like if Stiller and Mira were on, they were like that funny. Had that great interplay back and forth. The two I oh, yeah. heard the other day for Archer. Oh, you did. And she rounded the corner, arms up, telling me how thrilled she was with the episode. Oh, really? Well, we have she to give you so credit because you booked them. Well, you booked them. I just gave you the contact. Issue. Yeah, <laughs> and, but they were happy. To they do were it. wonderful. And and uh, when I sang the theme to Bye Bye Braverman, she was touched by that. She was. She was. Well, we went pretty deep in the research with oh, them. Oh, yes. And I think, and, and uh, of all the guests we've had, they, seem, they seemed uh, really to get the show. Oh, and yes. And what it was we were doing. And Ron took me aside as we were walking in the elevator, and he said, never stop doing this. Oh, and, yeah. And that was, he said we were providing a service, and, uh, which and made me feel good. He's got that wonderfully bitter sense he's of humor. He's wonderful. Yeah. He's wonderful. And, and then they sang the Breakfast Club song to Oh, us. yes. Yeah. And then at the end of the show and after we shut the mics off and everything, he leans over and kisses me on the cheek. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that whole episode was a grand experience. And thank you, Frankie, for for, uh, for bringing them into our orbit. My pleasure. Here we are, episode 123, Bob Super Dave Einstein. Oh, terrific. Uh, ne- probably never laughed so much in my life <laughs> at, at just him abusing us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and shot out of a cannon yeah. just like... Yeah, I like the Red Fox story, but I really like the Joey Heatherton story. Oh, yeah. He said, he said, Joey, we have three weeks to go. We have four episodes committed. We have no guests. Yeah. And she said, don't worry about it. She said, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Tony Bennett, and Liberace. And he said, they're locked? They're locked. You sure? Locked. Our first guest was Gary Berghoff. <laughs> and I had to give him a song. <laughs> I love that story. He was wonderful. And you were saying to me, don't start bringing up his his Park father who died. Yes. yes, right. And and well, I was just hoping you'd save it for till the end of the show. Yes, not just as she hit him with it. And of course, I hit him with it, and he told a great story. Yeah, and he was terrific. Yeah, uh, that that episode probably got our biggest response out of out of a hundred and thirty something episodes. And Bob called me, and he was thrilled, and he had the time of his life. And we'll have him back at, at, by popular demand. Episode 124, you couldn't go farther afield from Bob Einstein. Yeah. We ran this on 1010, uh, October 10th. Uh, the wonderful Lee Grant. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. One of the few episodes you did research for, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Whenever I bring up a fact uh, about this, the guest, you always jump. Lee, like, <laughs> oh, my God. Lee had, her, had us over to her home. <laughs> She's a, she's adorable, and she answers as the elevator opens into her apartment, and she was waiting for us. And Gilbert had spent some time at the library that day, yes. which was most impressive. <laughs> he cared <laughs> to impress Lee Grant, which was sweet. And and she just fell in love with you. Oh, she did. Yeah. yeah. She wanted to adopt him. Yeah. She, she was telling me how adorable I am. Yeah. And what a thrill. I mean, you know, I'm a kid who, you know, grew up on Long Island. I didn't have any, I didn't have parents in show business, you know, that, uh, to, to, to think that I'm walking into Lee Grant's apartment and she's showing me her Oscar. And she's. Pinch me moments. Yeah. She's telling us stories about the, how she was blacklisted. The great, yeah, that was uh, also touching. And, um. Yeah. Oh, an experience she had with some French girl. That's uh, a, that was yeah. a, that was a, that was yeah that was painful. And then yeah. you you called bullshit on her not sleeping with Warren Beatty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She claims she didn't fuck Warren Beatty. I say she did. Yep. 
But she she also had a nice kind of an artistic credo. You know, you do one for them and you do one for yourself. It was great. You know, she, yeah. Yeah, she talked about the swarm. She came clean yeah. about being in the swarm <laughs> yeah. and being oh, and, yeah. uh, she and was Airport 77. A lot of fun. A perfect guest. Plug and play, and we adore Lee Grant. Uh, Joe Pantoliano, numbered episode 125. Terrific. What can you say? Joey Joey Boots, according to Joey Dara Boots, Godfrey. as Dara he, calls him. <laughs> he, <laughs> Yeah. I just booked Joey Boots. At least she got Boots right. <laughs> he, he was another one. He could not be happier to get on the show. You booked him. I, well, I didn't book him. Dara booked him. But I met, when I mentioned it to him when he was here recording for a project I probably can't say, he, he lit up. He was like, yeah. yeah. Was like, and he was so open about all of his neuroses and yeah, his depression. <laughs> We're still getting tweets about it. And Joe's following us on on Twitter. And oh, he keeps yeah. retweeting them. Really touching. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Just the sweetest guy. Another yeah. one of those guys where you watch him on film, you think this guy's a little dangerous. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like a Harvey Keitel. Right. You know oh, those yes, guys who yes. are a little hesitant about meeting them. Yeah. And he's a pussycat and he's a doll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah loved and, him. And so open about every problem he's had, emotional, mental, yep. and, and really like just a caring person. Loved him to him. death. Yeah. Uh, we got to thank you for that one, Frankie. Episode 126, one of our funniest, Dana Gould. Oh, yeah. You guys doing uh, Vincent Price, both sides uh, yes. <laughs> on something stupid. <laughs> Dana is a truly funny man and and may know as, mu- as much, of, if not more, than we oh, do. Oh, yeah. About old movies. Yeah, and he's horror. a great one to talk to because you just, you don't have to think about anything. You just start talking about old movies and old TV and he just keeps up and adds to it yep uh tom savini uh episode 127 great makeup artist uh, another plug and play guest who gave us that fun video tour, <laughs> tour oh of yes home, of his home yes yeah that was a great one uh a guy we'd been wanting to get i'm winding this down uh november 17th 2016 what a year huh of guests oh, we my had God. winding down a guy we were trying to get for the longest time and that's john amos Oh, terrific. Yeah, another guy who came to play and was happy as hell to be here. But yeah, that's great. one of those I will spend the rest of my life dreading that I didn't have him go, damn, damn, damn. Let's call him up. Yeah, we should. <laughs> that's a great idea. He also pl- uh, pl- sang along with his old McDonald's commercial. Oh, terrific. Which was just fantastic. Um, Hal Linden, a really yes. sweet guy. A terrific episode. And brought his clarinet with him. What more can you ask from these guys? <laughs> Hal Linden shows up with his clarinet to serenade him. He was it's terrific. Like you can't believe it's happening. Uh, a, a doll of a guy. Um, and I sent the listener uh, reviews and raves to Hal. Um, episode 131, uh, Norman Steinberg. Oh, yes. Who I ran into in the street. And I said, Norman, come do the show. He was a fan. He, he <laughs> That was a thrill. Uh, started reading episode, uh, you know, reciting episode dialogue back to me, and uh, you got to tell the helicopter story. Again. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> By the way, somebody tweeted me that Buck Henry. They heard Buck Henry on another podcast, and he alluded to the helicopter story, but did not tell it. Oh, we got to get Buck Henry. So we got to get Buck Henry. We not get- right away. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, our a uh, couple of mini episodes that went very well. Paul was here. And helped the James Bond episodes that we did. People oh, yeah. love the James Bond. Oh, yeah. I want to end it on Whoopi, which was a great episode and is the current episode. A lot of fun. Yeah, at Caroline's. That, that was another one where Gilbert went exactly where he shouldn't have gone. I was right saying how beginning. much I was saying how much I love Amos and Andy. <laughs> and, and, yeah. After a few awkward moments, she got into the most interesting and personal talk about race and yeah. acting. Yeah. It, it, it was it fascinating. Was incredible. And only Gilbert, I think, could have elicited that kind of thing by being so rude. Oh yes. <laughs> and and own and makes magic with his right. in, inappropriateness. Right. And in one of the moments that I wish we had been filming uh, I was talking about how much I enjoy doing Hollywood Squares, and and she she just gives me a big hug. That was sweet. Yeah, yeah. I wish people yeah. could have seen that. Yeah. yeah. So so it was really a wonderful year, uh, twenty sixteen. I mean, what a, what a lineup of guests we had. I just want to thank everybody too, since this is our our, our last episode of the year. I want to thank. Uh, uh, I'm not going to thank you, Gilbert. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all carrying you. <laughs> 
<laughs> the great Frank Verderosa, who not only is is a peerless uh, uh, engineer and editor, but also is as you can hear booking guests, <laughs> talk grabbing people in the hallway here at Nutmeg and. We have to thank Paul Rayburn, who who does wonderful work, sits in here. One day you'll have to explain to me yes, what it, that work it, is. Oh, well, yeah. it's, a, it's truly a pleasure to work with you guys, really, and, and made even more so by the fact that Gilbert so often expresses how happy he is for me to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we have to thank uh, our, our, new, our new Twitter man, uh, uh, Greg Pear, who's new on board, uh, John Seals, our web designer and our, our web uh, webmaster. The great John Seals, uh, Mike McBeardo McPadden, who runs our <laughs> Facebook page and is and is indispensable. Uh, who am I leaving out? Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm leaving out somebody. Does Dara Godfrey do anything? Dara Godfrey, of course. <laughs> we thank Dara. Not, I know I'm going to leave people out, and I'm going to end up kicking myself. Uh, uh, well, I have to thank everybody at Sideshow because we're moving on. Yeah, and we're and we're going over to a different company. And uh, we have to thank uh, uh, Rodney Swearingen, who brought us into Sideshow a couple of years ago and, and held our hand and introduced us to podcasting and, and told Dara and I how it was done, and, and we're, we're forever grateful. Uh, Heather Cooney, Maria Spertolozzi, Andrew Stephen, Andrew Byrne, Brian Sussman, Randy Haig, uh, Heather Cavanaugh at Digital Media, who did wonderful work for us, and... and uh, oh, Brendan Bliss, our animator, who did those wonderful oh, shorts. Oh, I can't I, so much. Fun. I, I just so Brendan's name just jumped out at me. Uh, 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 we have to thank Ryan and Brian Dillon and Mark Gale for doing the terrific Muppet. Uh, oh the, yes, not Muppet. Yes. Excuse me, Puppet. Yes, <laughs> Muppet videos. <laughs> Muppets is trademarked. Uh, uh, that was wonderful. Last but not least, at, at Sideshow, Sean Marrick, our, our friend and our uh, uh, co-producer and editor and and and, and L.A. engineer and. And Sean has been an integral part of this show uh, from the beginning. So uh, can't thank Sean enough and Roddy enough and everybody at Sideshow. Of course, John Murray and John Fotiatis are wonderful musicians. And speaking of musicians, the the wonderful, terrific Joe McGinty. Uh, our friend Alex Brazell, who helped so much and is a spiritual advisor podcast-wise. Uh, Cav- pal Kevin Darty, who was in here quizzing us. <laughs> um, uh, Cl- uh, Cliff Nesterman. Cliff Nestor off. Uh, uh, Drew Friedman, of course, as always. Neil Berkeley making a wonderful documentary about Gilbert. Uh, Eddie Marino and Ryan. Uh, uh, Eric Fusco and, and Rob Smentek, who, uh, who started the, uh, the Gilbert Gottfried Listener Society, which uh, almost has, I think, a thousand people or some kind of crazy number on it in, in just a month's time. Uh, our pal Andrea Simmons, who's such a support of the show. If there's anybody I've left out, uh, oh, I have to, of course, say a, a, a bigger and a, a more uh, a more emotional uh, thank you to Dara, who uh, who keeps this uh, train on the track in spite of her husband. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great year. We're very grateful. We're grateful to all the listeners uh, who 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 make the show go. Uh, Danny Duraney and and uh, uh, Bookers and uh, and uh, who else? My Jeff Abraham and the people who help us book the show and. Bill Porricelli, Jessica Wynn, our photographer, of course, uh, Darren Foster, uh, of course, our resourceful publicist, Glenn Schwartz, uh, Jonathan Winchell, uh, let's see, uh, Scott, Scott and Lisa Land, Matt Beckoff, Bert Kearns, Lex Passeris, uh, all the people who help us book guests, um, uh, Harlan Bowl and, and, and Roger Neal, uh, let's see, Lance Laurie, uh, the people who've written so uh, in such flattering terms about the show, uh, Paul Brownfield and, and Donald Liebenson, uh, and uh, Jeremy Moran, uh, Jeremy Moran, and uh, Nathan Rabin, and uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, if I've forgotten anybody, I apologize. Uh, and lastly, check out Sean's podcast, Worst Collection Ever, where Sean and his wife Jen uh, talk about their terrible comics collection. So you want to check that out. So if there's anybody I forgot to thank, shame on me. But uh, we'll thank you on social media and in the new year. It's been a great year. Oh yeah, hey, yes, pal. Because it's been a wonderful year. I think I've got some music to take us out. You do? <laughs> so I'll rap and then we'll... Because it's the 70th anniversary of It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, perfect, Frank. We'll, we'll end You've the year. You've crystallized my thoughts eloquently. This has been Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast. And one more thing to all of our listeners. Happy New Year. To my big brother, George. 
the richest man in town. <laughs> Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Atta boy, Clarence. <laughs> 